Welcome to video 2 of Gamer to Game Developer Series 2 and in this video we're going to convert our Unity 3.4.0 project over to Unity 4. In this series I'm using Unity 4 and whenever a new version of Unity 4 comes out I'll use that for this series too. Now if you do happen to be watching this series sometime in the future where there's a much newer version of Unity, maybe like Unity 5 is out by then, and you do want to follow along but find that that newer version isn't entirely compatible with what I'm showing you in this series, then Unity does have a very useful link here saying looking for an older version. It's just right under downloads and you'll come to this page and then you can actually download a previous versions of Unity which is pretty useful. And the other thing too is um, all versions of Unity they have a similar sort of download link. So I've, I do have it copied here. It's basically that uh, address and then just the version of Unity is changed. Okay so now let's go on to actually importing the project. Okay I've launched Unity and I'm now in the process of upgrading the project so I went ahead and I opened the project folder from Unity you know just file open and what I've done is I've continued from series 1 I've just copied the folder that I had from series 1 and I renamed it gamer to game developer s2 so wherever you left off in series 1 so I'm assuming that you've uh, followed along with the project to the end so then you have this pretty much similar thing to where I left off then you can continue uh, with that for series 2. Now if you have the complete learning package then the project folder for uh, video 32 is where I had last been making changes. That's the last video where I'd actually added something new. You can use that project folder for this series 2. Or instead if you have the completed project folders then it's just the project folder for Unity 3.4.0 and you can just use that folder for this series 2. So yeah, just make a copy of it and start using it with uh, Unity 4. Okay, so I'll hit continue here since I'm upgrading the project. It took a few minutes for the project to get upgraded and the very first dialog that comes up is about converting some texture files to make them as normal maps, but uh, I won't do that because these weren't originally normal maps or intended to be anyway so I'll just ignore that I'll just say ignore so it doesn't change those textures okay now we need to take care of the errors we can see warning message down below and you'll also notice that unity 4 has a different uh, interface well slightly anyway not not too different okay so let's handle each of these um, warning messages bit by bit so the very first one is talking about uh, the third person controller and it's saying oh how this um, uh, pipe symbol is getting used so it's not getting used properly to mean an or. So we can just uh, go to that and actually what I'm thinking is I'll just simply delete that character controller. Yeah I don't need the third person controller at all anyway. So it has two scripts on it. I can just delete this uh, uh, prefab. I'll just delete the third person controller. Yes. Delete it and I'll go to the scripts and delete both of those third person scripts. Yes, delete. Okay, now let's go back to the console. And okay, it's telling me I've got some other code that's obsolete. It's telling me it's the blink script and it's about game object dot active. Yes, that code is obsolete now. So let's go over to it. Oh, that's funny. I thought by clicking on it, it would have just taken me there. Oh, I'm just, well, I've just double clicked on it. Maybe that'll just take me to that. Uh, error inside monodevelop. Okay, so it's loaded it up and that's what's different. So I have here this code uh, to enable a certain game object when they're hit and well not when they're hit so that they can be hit apparently. Oh yeah this is in the blink script so after they finish blinking. Okay, so what I need to do now is instead of dot .active 
I need to say it's now of the format game object dot set active and then brackets whatever that is. So I'll change this so it'll be trigger dot set active. So that's the new bit of code is true. And I get rid of the equal true bit. All right. Now let's go back. I'll save it. Go back to Unity. I think there was another area where there was a problem. Yes, there is. So I'll just double click on that. Go back and we have here when the player was um, engaging in blinking. I was turning off their trigger game object so they couldn't get hit while blinking. So in this case, then I'll set, I'll remove that. So trigger dot set active to false. Okay. And just save that. So yep, they're both correct. Okay, and uh, to understand what the set active is, you can just go to the Unity script reference. That's what I did. Basically, uh, what it means is that now your parent game object, so if you have a script on your parent game object where you uh, deactivate that game object using set, uh, set active, then what will happen is that uh, all of the child game objects they'll automatically also get deactivated. So the whole tree will get deactivated from a single script on the parent game object. So which is pretty good. Okay, let's go back to Unity and take care of the others. All right, I'll take care of the win script, then I'll come to the communication window script since that'll be a bit more involved. It's, I'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, uh, this is a simple one too, so game object dot set active faults okay and that just leaves one thing now that this code is obsolete so it's this line here input dot eat key press on text field focus it's obsolete it um, it's what allows us to be able to type into the text field uh, after it appears. So since it's obsolete, that means in a later version of Unity, it's going to be gone. And then we'll have, instead of it being a warning message, it'll become an error message. So let's just delete then this bit of code. There's no need for it anymore. And we also have a fair bit of other code that is no longer useful. So here in the update function, we have all of this bit of code here from uh, when checking that the player is a disconnected one, well, that they're not a disconnected one. And then that's when they're allowed to bring up the text field. Now, this bit of code is no longer useful because it's being carried out in the update function and the type of code that we need to implement now is on in the on GUI function. So if you actually try to run it in Unity right now, you'd notice there's some, it doesn't work quite as expected anymore. The text field will behave oddly. Like if you press the T, the text field will appear and there's already a T in it. And I think, I can't quite recall, but in one of the cases, either the built, uh, exe game or it's either that or the web player uh, the text field you can't even type into it so anyway so we need to change that so unfortunately our previously defined inputs communication and send message so this was the t key and this was the return key they aren't usable anymore so i'll just delete them so that's gone and instead I'm going to type in some new code. So over in the on GUI function, over here, I'll add some new code just below the GUI layout portion. So what I'll put here is as usual, a comment explaining what I'm doing. So, you know, if the player presses the return, so this bit of code is going to be when the player presses the return key. So when they press the return key and that text field for typing in the chat message is visible, then I'll set the variable, the Boolean send message to true. And that causes uh, the message to get sent based on the code down below. Uh, anyway, so if the player 
presses the return key and the text field is visible then set send message to true and I'll just put in there a comment that it works for unity 3.5.6 and unity 4 okay well I might as well put there 0.0.1 and now the code itself is if event dot current dot type is equal to well is event type dot key up and event dot current dot key code is key code dot return and also I'll go to the next line and show text box is true okay so if that's the case then I'll set the boolean send message is true alright so what that's basically saying is if I have a key up event and the key code for that key up event happens to be the return key then and the show text box is true which means that the text field is visible on the screen then the boolean send message gets sent to set to true and the message is sent via RPC to all the other players okay at the end of the on GUI function now we need to add also some new code now this is the code that allows that text field to appear in the first place. So let's go mm, all the way down, actually all the way down and to the very end where we have here GUI layout dot end area. So before that I'll now add in a new bit of code. So if event dot current dot type is an event type dot key up and event dot current dot key code is key code dot t and show text box is equal to false. Alright, if those conditions are met, then what we will do is to set show text box is equal to true. And I just need to put another equal sign there. Alright. Okay, and I should probably explain uh, why I've put this code down here. So well, I guess I'll write a comment, maybe a maybe a long comment. So right here, if the player presses the T key, then set show text box to true. Yep, and this will bring up. the text field that will allow the player to type in messages and I'll explain now here why I put the code down here because this bit of code so right there this bit of code must be down here because key presses fire off at least twice and on GUI carries out two different events so one for determining the position 
of controls and the other for drawing them on the screen or drawing them on the screen. Now I'll explain, I've written down, so if we didn't place the code down here, if we didn't place the code here, then in one of our, well in one of the on GUI events, Unity will attempt to draw the text field, but its position will have not yet been determined by a layout event. And so an error will be thrown up saying argument exception getting here yeah, getting control zeros position in a group with only zero controls when doing key up Okay, that was a rather long comment, and I can just save that. And that is it for this communication window script. So we can jump back to Unity and just check that there are no errors appearing, which is good. Now we can build and run. So I'll just uh, minimize that a little bit. We'll reduce the size of that. And uh, let's go to File, Build Settings. Yep. All oh, right. So uh, the name of my scene is Series One Prototype. So maybe I need to change that since it's now Series Two. So let's head over to Scenes. Uh, but if I do change it, then in that case, probably the light mapping won't work anymore. Oh well. I'll just leave it Series One Prototype as the name of the file. I'm sure I can send change it with the built exe itself. So I'll just say Series 1 prototype. I guess one thing, I can know that this scenery was all created in Series 1, and I'm continuing with that. Okay, yes, Windows setup, uh, yep, build and run. So yes, I need to save it, and I want to call it, uh, I'll call it S2 prototype. So series 2 prototype and I'll just save that oh so you can name it anything anyway okay so that's it it's done it's gone it's built that let me just jump back to this close this window down turn this on and I'll set up a server I'll use this one. I can enter a name for the player. I'll just leave it as it is. I'll connect. Uh, as usual, I can assign stats to myself. I'll just join any team. And there we go. I'm in the game. I can shoot. Oh, more importantly, can I send a text message? So test. Yes, it's working. I can see it over in the server's window. So that's all good. There's, um, that was it. It was pretty simple. Everything is fully functional. I can do construction of blocks, etc. And remove the blocks too. Ah, let's use a rocket. Okay, well, so that's good news. So we've reached the end of uh, this video for converting the project over. And I'll see you in the future with another video.